Dr. Gunther von Minkowitz is, is going to uh, talk about the, uh, the Natan trial, which is one of those trials looking at bone interactive agents. And is, uh, that's, of course, one of the more interesting aspects of, of the material in this year's NEAT. Thank you, Peter. It's my pleasure to present to you here in this press conference the results um, uh, from the German press group, the AGO press group, that's another German um, academic group, and the uh, Austrian ABCSG uh, breast cancer study group. Um, we three conducted the first post knee advanced study um, using a bisphosphonate in early breast cancer. So the design, um, I have to disclose that I received research grants and uh, speaker honoraria, honoraria and consulting fees from Novartis and Roche. Um, the design was a straightforward design. Patients were treated with neoadjuvant chemotherapy, at least two cycles of a taxane, two cycles of an anthracycline, and then they were randomized within a time period of at least of a minimum of a maximum of three years to either observation or to receive five-year treatment with solitronate. Uh, we used the same schedule as in the uh, large ASUR trial, so a de-escalation of the treatment intervals resulting in a total doses, uh, total injections of, of 19 doses. Uh, patients received continu uh, simultaneously prior or during the, this period, of course, endocrine treatment, trastuzumab, and radiotherapy, uh, if it was indicated. Um, randomization was stratified by center, hormone receptor status, age, and time since surgery. The population of 693 patients was very well balanced between the arms, but as you can see here, 80% of the patients had hormone receptor positive disease and only 70% had HER2 positive disease. So in general, the, the population, despite having no pathologic complete response according to the knowledge today, um, uh, is probably not so unfavorable as we thought when we did our sample size calculation. So, in fact, the observed event rate was only 50% of the expected rate, and we would have needed to wait another six to eight additional years to reach the required 316 events. Therefore, we used the pre-planned interim analysis, including 171 events, um, and supported this analysis by a non-protocoled Bayesian fertility analysis. With that, we set the fertility boundary to 15%, um, that is the likelihood that uh, if, if the, the uh, result would be above 15%, that, that is the likelihood that uh, with further follow-up, this trial would become positive. Uh, but ha um, when we did the analysis, the uh, probability of success was only less than 6%. And with that um, minor chance for success, we considered the results final and the results were released by the IDMC of the study. As you can see here, there was no difference in disease-free survival for patients having observation after intensive chemotherapy or uh, receiving uh, solitronate uh, for five years. The hazard ratio was 0.96. And we are looking in subgroups. There's no subgroup where a significant advantage for this uh, bisphosphonate treatment is observed. However, when you look especially on the group of patients over 55 years of age, the point estimate for an hazard, of an hazard ratio of 0.83 is identical to what has been presented yesterday by the Oxford meta-analysis by Rob Coleman, um, showing that this is the group, the postmenopausal group, um, is where uh, bisphosphonates have um, <coughs> a benefit uh, for patients. As expected to the previous disease-free survival analysis, no difference in overall survival was observed. In summary, uh, this is the first randomized post knee advanced study um, investigating treatment with solitronate, and this, it could not improve outcome in patients without a PCR after knee advanced chemotherapy. We have in the future better select these patients, especially um, hormone receptor positive, HER2 negative patients, to have um, an, a sufficient risk um, um, 
popu risk population to study um, future uh, compounds. The observed non-significant trend favoring solitronate in the in the age group above 55 years is in accordance to to the um, Oxford meta-analysis and with um, no new safety signal observed in, in our study, um, we can use um, uh, bisphosphonate also um, after uh, intensive neoadjuvant treatment. There are now a couple of post neoadjuvant trials on the way. Uh, one trial with a PARP inhibitor has already uh, closed accrual in triple negative disease. The Catherine study is investigating TDM1 for patients with positive disease and no PCR. And the Penelope study has just included its first patient last month um, uh, using investigating the CDK inhibitor pulvociclib in patients with hormone receptor positive negative disease and uh, having a high risk score for um, an early relapse risk. Thank you very much. Neil. Yeah. Uh, Neil Osterwa with Netscape. Uh, Dr. Mamikowicz, what's the therapeutic rationale for using bisphosphonates in this population? Well, the, um, there were two main reasons. First, um, when we were screening the area in 2004, what are potential possibilities? We, we thought that uh, in, a, in a group of patients that have been received, and at that time we used, we used a lot of TAC chemotherapy, that had received six, and in, in the trial situation it was even eight cycles of TAC, uh, no further chemotherapy would be a considered appropriate uh, to these patients because they were quite exhausted already. So we were looking for a non-cytotoxic agent. And at that time, uh, bisphosphonates um, had already established uh, 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 efficacy in the treatment of bone metastases. Mm -hmm. And there were also um, a couple of ad event studies with clotronate available um, showing uh, um, uh, survival benefit. So, so it was reasonable to to go into into this high risk population with, with such an agent. So, so you're looking specifically to prohibit bone metastases, or to, uh, to it was try to the the uh, there were even um, uh, results from these adjuvant studies suggesting that there is um, a decrease in uh, non bone lesions, but of course in general the the idea was to reduce bone metastases and by this uh, improve um, outcome of patients. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Ed Sussman with uh, MedPage today. Um, do you see the possibility of doing another trial in, in postmenopausal women, specifically? For, with the bisphosphonate? Yes. Well, we, we were we were we are currently discuss discussing such a that's a such a trial uh, with the idea that um, we have no prospective um, tr trial, um, especially in this um, study population, but um, uh, we discussed it yesterday after having seen uh, Rob Coleman's uh, presentation and actually we are, we are not very much in favor any longer for that and I expect that we have our guideline meeting for Germany in January and I expect that we will give a recommendation to use bisphosphonates in postmenopausal patients. Um, so it makes no sense to do another prospective uh, trial. Caroline Hill with Gasco Post. So you had a very small proportion of patients that were actually postmenopausal in your study, didn't you? It was 33 percent. Am I wrong? Um, Am I looking the, at that the wrong? The group of patients above 55 oh. years, uh, that was um, a group, it was a little bit less than one third. Yes, yeah. but the, well, wouldn't the, that be normally um, be expected to be a larger group in a yeah, but uh, the, the average age of patients, at least in our hands, receiving neoadjuvant chemotherapy is 50. Um, so it's much younger than the average population, and that is because, of course, they are, these patients are pre-selected to be uh, uh, candidates for, for such an intensive treatment. So if you had more older patients in your study, do you think that trend would have been significant like it was in the meta-analysis? Well, I believe that, uh, it, of course, it, it would have helped, but on the other hand, uh, um, I also believe that the trial would have been still 
uh, larger to, to show um, such a, a benefit. And we needed a meta-analysis including um, 17,000 patients to, to show to and show prove that, this, yeah. this, this uh, Okay, advantage. and one more question. Uh, did you look at specifically bone mats? Because in the meta-analysis, that's where the benefits seem to be for This is planned, but uh, so far we were not able to, done it, to do it.